Hi everyone, Jessica here from Paper Ink Stamp and welcome back to my channel. So today's video we are doing another Tag Tuesday and this time we are going to be using a few different elements and kind of building up a scene. So we're using the Crafters Companion Happy Camper Stamp and Die Set. This is a little bit older, I'm not sure if it's still available um, but it's something that I've had in my stash. I'm pretty sure I've used it only once um, on a card and I haven't used it since so I really wanted to get it out. I'm trying to kind of go back through some of my stash and just use it. Um, um, especially things that I know that I've only used once or you know a handful of times so I've die cut the tag the same shape um, as before uh, this is the creative craft products uh, tags like nestables and I've also then cut a scalloped rectangle as well this is from the uh, hunky dory scalloped and straight edge uh, nesting rectangles because I wanted to do some ink blending in that so I've die cut the tag itself from some teal cardstock and then I wanted to do some ink blending and sort of build up the scene so we don't always directly have to go onto the tag we can kind of layer these up so I'm going to do a little bit of ink blending here. So I have got um, a twisted citron, we've got tumbled glass and chipped sapphire. And I'm using this stencil by Funky Fossil Designs. This is the Slimline uh, Landscape Stencil. So I'm just going to use this bottom portion just for a little hill. Now you really don't end up seeing any of this um, because of the scene that we're going to add on to here. Um, but it's nice to know that you've kind of built up that just in case you can see it. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and I want wanted to um, do the background I was going to do it with um, the cloud shapes and things but to be honest I didn't really like how it was looking um, and I started off using the tumbled glass and I did a couple of these again you do see more of the sky um, but maybe it was because I was using the oxides um, you know so it wasn't kind of showing up as much but I decided that I didn't really uh, like how it was looking so I am in a second just going to go back over this just straight away on, over the top uh, with that tumbled glass there and I'm just going to bring it down um, so it doesn't end up kind of directly overlapping um, that hill but I get it as close as I can without kind of um, overlapping those two colours. Then I'm going to come in on the edge with the chipped sapphire um, so I'm just going to deepen this a little bit again we're having we're going to turn this into kind of a um a, obviously a camping scene but sort of more at night we're going to have um, a little fire on there and we're going to add some stars onto this background um as well so I'm just going back and forth just to blend those two colours together um, and that's pretty much the background again you're not going to see tons of this um but it's nice to sort of uh, have that there and this uh, rectangle does fit quite nicely uh, onto this tag as well so I'm going to stamp a couple of the uh, images uh, onto some Nina cardstock. So it has this really lovely scene in here. You've got some mountains in the background, you've got a couple of trees, and you've got this really lovely giant tent. Um, and I'm going to stamp that, and then you've seen I dropped my ink pad, and I dropped it onto um, that uh, blended background. So this then did change it a little bit again. So I wanted you to be able to see uh, some of that grass uh, area, but yeah, you don't end up seeing it because I did drop my ink pad so just be careful um you know depending on what you have around your desk so you don't ruin any of your projects um and I do just end up I do manage to cover this up uh with the images so again if you do make a mistake like this if you drop something get something where you don't want it you know if you get some embellishments and things if you got images that you're putting on maybe you might have to just tweak your design a little bit but it's definitely not ruined so I'm stamping this in some Memento ink, uh, which is an alcohol friendly ink because I'm going to use my Copic sketch markers and then some of my tri-blend markers as well by Spectrum Noir. So I've stamped the scene, we've got the campfire and this backpack. So again, the tag itself obviously isn't uh, particularly big, so we don't want to try and fit too much in here um, because you're really not going to see too much of it. We want enough to kind of fill the tag and create the scene, um, but yeah, we don't need to sort of cover it um in you know lots of different images so I'm using uh, some greens for the trees we're going to have an orange tent uh, we're going to do a little bit of grass in here um, we've got those um mountains in the background so they are snow covered um but we do have the mountains in the background so for the trees um this is kind of a favorite little um green trio of mine so this is a uh, g40 g43 and g46 uh, it's quite a, a darker green it's not like a, a vibrant green at all um so I do have a brighter green that I use for the grass um 
but I just like this a little bit more for leaves. It's a little bit more kind of uh, muted, a little more toned back. For the mountains, I am using the um, Ice Grey Blend from the Tri Blends markers. Again, just really simple. For the tree trunks and what I end up using for the uh, logs of the fire was the tan shades. Um, and then for the tent itself, I wanted something nice and bright. Um, and I really love this or orange combination. This is YR04, YR07 and YR09. Um, and I'm just doing it really deep uh, sort of inside the tent and then trying to get some lighter patches uh, on the outside of the tent and then this is where I come in um, a lot of this ends up getting uh, cut off obviously you know if you were just stamping this onto a card of things you can keep all of this and really build it up um, but when you use the coordinating dies to cut it out you do cut a lot of this grass out so you only see a lot more of the darker color but for here I used uh, YG06, YG07 and YG09 uh, then I'm going to go over uh, to the fire so for this I in the very center I put YG15 which is a yellow and then went back with those same orange colors and then again for those logs I've gone back in with that tan shade and then for the backpack I did a blue backpack just to um, change up the color scheme a little bit so this was BO1, BO4 and BO6 uh, and then I put a little bit of yellow on there as well with Y15 and a little bit of Y11. Uh, just for the bits and pieces around it and then I'm pretty sure for the um, little rolled up bit on the backpack I think I used BG15 uh, for that one so I'm just going to trim these out again so this uh, particular set comes with the coordinating die so um, it comes with the stamps and the dies in here so it's a really really great set um, I think they did other ones in the same range and it was sort of uh, camping I think there was a caravan and they did a few like by the seasides and things it was a really um, great little collection. So I'm just going to run this through my Gemini Mini. Um, these, This is my new um, die cutting folder. So it's really nice to use something, um, you know, to replace the other one. I said before uh, when I did that little haul video um, that I'd had mine for quite a long time. But this is why I really love having the Gemini Mini um, is because then it's so quick just to put these through rather than... If I've got lots of things to die cut, look at the start. Uh, when I die cut the rectangle and the tag itself, I did run that through my Gemini machine because um, I'm die cutting both at the same time I could have done the same thing here and uh, pop you know both of these um, through that as well but I really like just the handiness of having the Gemini mini so now I've die cut those we can go ahead and put this together so you can see really now uh, where I had dropped that ink pad on it so what I've done is I've just brought down my image a little more so again I wanted it higher so you could see then um, that grassy bit underneath but again these things happen so it's just a case of um, sort of covering it up so because then you got rid of all of the um, the grass on there so I felt like the sky really needed to have something so I took one of those uh, starry images um, and I'm going to stamp some uh, stars onto this background and really sort of turn it into more of a night sky. So I'm going to first use my anti-static powder bag because I'm going to cover this with some white embossing powder. I've got my uh, Versamark ink pad here. So this is brilliant because uh, it's really nice and juicy. I did have to be careful a little bit here uh, because it was kind of moving around, whether that was because of the inkiness um, on the stamp and then that oxide background. Um, but I basically just covered this whole background uh, in these stars. I'm going to cover it then with some uh, white uh, embossing powder. I think this is the Simon Says Stamp uh, Fine Detail Embossing Powder, I think it was called. Um, but I sort of just grabbed a white embossing powder. And then you can see that none of that powder is stuck to that oxide. So you want to be really careful. Make sure it's kind of dried. Use an anti-static powder bag. So then the uh, embossing powder doesn't stick anywhere you don't want it to. And then I'm just going to melt this with my heat tool. So this um, melted really easily. But let your gun heat up um, a little bit first. And then you can heat from the front and the back. Um, and that will sort of prevent some warping but also again letting your gun heat up um, will also prevent that warping as well but I'm going to be gluing this uh, this portion directly onto my tag um, and then I'm going to prop the other pieces up on a foam tape but then gluing um, directly down as well if you need to put something heavy on this uh, just to help that um, sit flat on your 
uh, project and that uh, again that will prevent any kind of warping if you're using foam tape I would recommend using more foam tape sort of covering more of it um, so you don't get any kind of wrinkles it doesn't sag in any areas so I'm just covering the back of my little scene here uh, with some foam tape. Uh, so this is going to be propped up on foam tape and then I'm going to just glue the other two images onto this because we don't really need that much um, dimension. The, what we have with this here is perfectly fine. So the uh, backpack is going to go on the right hand side because I still had a little portion um, of what you could see where I'd uh, dropped my ink pad on it so I popped that on the right and then my uh, little campfire is going to go there on the left I do end up just cutting a because I only glued it um, I did end up just cutting a small piece of foam tape as well just to kind of stick uh, under there just to support it I probably should have done that uh, before sticking it down um, but it just keeps it nice and level and just supports it so that is um, sort of all the bits I'm going to be popping onto this. I wanted to do just a few little highlights. So I'm going to take my white gel pen and I'm just going to add some little highlights just around the images. So some onto the logs. I'm going to add a little bit onto the uh, tent itself, so onto the side and then those flaps. And then lastly, just onto um, the little bag there. So now we've got that, it just adds a little bit of detail, a little bit of shine to it. Now we're gonna do our sentiment. So again, if I perhaps hadn't um, done the stars on the background, I could have then just stamped my sentiment directly onto that background. But I'm gonna add it onto a piece of yellow card. I think this is the Marigold yellow card, um, just to kind of pick up the, the yellow from the backpack. And then obviously those little sort of lighter orange tones. I'm gonna stamp this Happy Camper uh, onto, um, the yellow card stuff like I said uh, and then I'm just going to fussy cut around that so there's a few sentiments in this uh, stamp set uh, but they don't have coordinating dies the dies are only for the uh, images themselves uh, so I am just going to fussy cut around this which is fine because I can get it nice and um, sort of cropped on there again we don't need it to be sort of too big and that can then go up on the um right hand side of our tag so what you could do then is because you've got all of these elements you could build a um, a card to match this you could um, create your own patterned paper and create a gift bag if you were um, given a present or some wrapping paper and things and then you are going to have everything that matches together so you know we can create these tags and then have everything else kind of uh, matching into it so I'm just using this little hole punch uh, just to punch a hole in the top and I'm going to use then this twine from uh, Creative Expressions. Uh, I am quite liking this. It is um, it is a bit more coarse, like it, it's not like a smooth twine. Um, I do I do quite like it, um, how it is. It just adds like a little bit of texture, but um, you know, if you want something of a little bit of a neater twine, um, maybe this isn't the twine for you. But uh, the other tags I've done uh, in the previous uh, weeks, I've used just the black. This this is the natural I didn't really want to I wanted to add something a little bit brighter uh, onto this tag so I just loop it through um, and then I just sort of tie it onto itself into a bow uh, not particularly great at tying bows I do blame it on being left-handed um, but if you just fuss with it a little bit you can get it looking um, nice and sort of how you want it to and then that is basically my tag finished for today's video. So if you did enjoy it, please give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. I will try to pop some links to the products that I've used in today's video in the description box down below, along with a link to my Etsy shop as well. So that's it for today's video. Thanks very much for watching and happy crafting.